Welcome to the Ball Bride Show. It is Tuesday, March 26th, and Joe Biden, as always, is still not even close. The worst president in American history, Patriots. It's great to be back with you on this fine Tuesday morning. You know, do you ever just sit there and go to the grocery store and you see maple syrup behind glass, toothpaste, lip balm, lip gloss, toothpicks, and just go, what happened? Like, what the hell happened? <laughs> Some of you are going, Brad, we don't live in California. We don't live in a Democrat-ran area. We don't have to deal with crap like that. It's, but it's just like anything, you know what I mean? You guys ever just like look around, drinking a nice cup of coffee in the morning going, what the hell? <laughs> like, what the hell? Like 40% of our kids come out of school like proficient in something. There's goods locked up behind glass that shouldn't be like coffee grinds and paper. You got massive amount of a homeless taking over our city streets defecating in front of our children, masturbating in front of other women, throwing hot diarrhea on citizens. That's a real thing. What? It's just like, what the hell's going on? No border secure. We're securing everybody else's border other than our own. <laughs> just just having a nice morning cup of joe with the boys and the gals, you know, the patriots. Just... <laughs> okay, well, uh, let's get in some news today because we have a jam-packed episode for you all today. And we're going to kick it off here with Israel and U.S. relations, because, folks, things are not looking so good between the two friends. Netanyahu cancels Israeli diplomatic trip to Washington after the U.S. refuses to veto United Nations resolution calling for Gaza ceasefire over Ramadan. Now, I'm going to cover this really briefly just to kind of give a little background and context. And then I want to jump into yesterday's White House press briefing where Ed O'Keefe questions John Kirby. On this very thing. And that was kind of the theme of yesterday's White House press briefing was this very thing here because things are not looking good between Israel and the U.S. right now. Basically, this is making it seem like the U.S. is not having Israeli or the Israel uh, people's back. So Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Monday announced that he is canceling the planned visit of a delegation to Washington after the United States refused to veto a U.N. Security Council resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Now, this is not just a White House giving the double middle finger to him and the Israeli people, but it's also the Israeli people giving the double middle finger back. So minutes before the resolution was carried by 14 votes to zero, folks, the UN is so freaking corrupt. If you want to read a great book, I'm not saying you have to be a Nikki Haley fan, but she does have a great book about her time as UN ambassador, and it really gives you a behind the scenes view just of how disgusting some of these countries are in terms of the relations, not just with us, but also Israel relations. We'll put in air quotes. Netanyahu told Israel news. I don't, is it Israel, Israeli? doesn't matter. Media that the visit would not happen if the White House failed to veto it. In light of the change in the American position, Prime Minister decided the delegation would not leave his office after the vote, calling the decision a clear retreat from his previous stance. The impasse and the latest twist in diplomatic efforts to ease the suffering of Palestinian civilians caught up in the fighting and to secure the release of hostages held by Hamas. It's interesting because they go ease of suffering. Folks, I just want to re remind everybody that it's war. I don't want anybody to suffer, but it's war. Like We have been so far, I think, removed of a world war, meaning World War II, even though the the some of them are still alive. They're slowly passing, but their children here, the baby boomers. We're so removed from war that we actually forget the atrocities of what happens during war. And maybe this is a good reminder of why you don't want to go to war is because of the suffering that's involved with it. But I just want to point out that the Palestinian people overwhelmingly, not even close, either approve or, or support the October 7th attacks. It's a wild statistic coming out of Gaza. So the Palestinians, yeah, they are suffering. But I mean, what did you expect when something like this happened? I understand it was not the Palestinian people, it was Hamas, but Hamas is an elective branch, if that's what you want to call it, branch, I'm sure, of basically what's taking place in, in, in Palestine, we'll put that in air quotes, and this is kind of what happens, kind of one of those things you have to to find out. Look, if Mexico did this to the United States, do you think we would be as peaceful as maybe Israel's doing by only doing targeted attacks? I don't know, maybe, not sure, but either, it's, it's good on, it's not good on either side, and it doesn't look good on the United States to do this. 
It doesn't look good for Israel to go in and kill a bunch of Palestinians. It's not good, obviously, for Hamas, a terrorist organization, to go after civilians. Like, it's just all crappy at the end of the day. And it highlights how the relationship between the U.S. is breaking down amid the bloodshed in Gaza. I mean, it makes you wonder at some point, is the U.S. even going to continue to back the United States? John Kirby is saying that. But it makes you wonder if the funding is going to be cut at some point or we're not going to support the decision because you have this coming up right here. So American officials have repeatedly said that they are worried about the Israel plan, Israel's plan to launch a major ground offensive in Rafa, where about half of the Gaza's 2.3 million population has found refuge. I Meaning they're worried that when they go in, you're just going to see the casualties just kind of skyrocket. And maybe that's a maybe that's a possibility. I don't know. You know, you're you're talking about certain type of warfare that's just in the middle of a cluster of people just jam-packed. And that was what part of this delegation was supposed to meet about was the United States giving them kind of the historical context and more understanding of what the United States has done in type in these types of terrains and this type of, I don't know if you call it a city or this type of industrialized area. Um, that was kind of the, the conversation and maybe saying, hey, this probably isn't the route you want to go. With Ramadan ending next month, it means the ceasefire would last for just two weeks. If the U.S. does not veto a resolution for a ceasefire that is not conditional on the release of hostages, I will cancel the delegation's departure to Washington, which is exactly what happened. And that's why we have Ed O'Keefe here questioning John Kirby on this very thing, which was everybody's question uh, during yesterday's White House press briefing. Let's roll it. Uh, thank you. Uh, you say it's not a shift in policy by voting for this today. Get specific with us as to why again, and to the charge that by even abstaining, because normally there may be some attempt at the Security Council or the UN overall to condemn Israel every so often for whatever reason, and the US usually stands up and vetoes those resolutions. <clears throat> Here now for the first time in a while, the United States is at least abstaining and allowing it to go through. So the perception broadly is that the US is no longer got Israel's back when it comes to conversations like this with the UN. Yeah, that's just not true. That's the key thing there. Key word, and Ed does an awesome job here. It is the perception that you just gave off. That's the huge deal. Regardless of whether you agree with what was stated or not, U.S. generally sides with Israel because you already know the rest of the United Nations isn't going to. It's typical, which is what he kind of just referred to. So this looks like we don't have their back anymore. It, it's such a terrible image for the United States. Nothing can be further from the truth, quite frankly. Of course, we still have Israel's back. I mean, as you and I are speaking, we are still providing tools and capabilities, weapon systems, so that Israel can defend itself against which we we, we agree is still a viable threat uh, to Hamas. Again, no change by this non-binding resolution on what Israel can or cannot do in terms of defending itself. Um, but, you know, the other day, Friday, when I was up here, Brian was asking me about, you know, how how come it was okay for or not okay for Russia and China to veto a resolution that we drafted on Friday uh, when we vetoed similar ones prior uh, to it. And, and I, my answer then is going to be my answer today because of the substance of it. The ones we vetoed didn't condemn Hamas. This one didn't condemn Hamas, which is why we couldn't support it. But we didn't veto it because in general, unlike previous res resolutions, this one did fairly capture what has been our consistent policy, which is linking a hostage deal and the release of those men and women with, of course, uh, uh, a temporary ceasefire. There are U.S. officials today saying Netanyahu's acting this way because he's facing some domestic political pressure. There's domestic political issues going on. Aren't there also domestic political pressures facing President Biden? And that's part of the reason why y'all are allowing this to happen today? I I can't speak yeah, for yeah, members of the Democratic Party saying he's doing this wrong. You got the general public suggesting his support for Israel is his place. Is that part of why this is going through? No, no, absolutely not. And I got to take issue with the premise of the question. The president makes decisions based on the national security interests of the United States. Uh, and this decision to abstain on this resolution is in keeping with the national security interests of the United States. And quite frankly, it's in keeping with the national security concerns of the Israeli people. Customs and border policy. So he's going to get into kind of the border stuff, I believe, in just one moment. And we will come back to that because we have, obviously, illegal immigration news. But not only is this a bad kind of public move for the United States, uh, 
it also has a possibility of extrapolating into something even worse. And this is something a lot of people have talked about, other conservatives, Republicans, uh, Fox News, Daily Mail, Daily Caller, and stuff like that is there's kind of a theme with this president not to back his allies in a nutshell. What I mean by that is he pulls out of Afghanistan, which is a massive debacle, right? Basically hands the Taliban and other terrorist organizations in the region, a bunch of military grade equipment in the billions for that matter. Full Humvees, night vision, goggles, tons of ammo. I mean, you name it, it was left there. Tanks, Humvees. I mean, I know I mentioned it all. Helicopters. So he basically just gives all this military-grade equipment to these people. But it also shows that he's just not going to support things that he needs to support. And he's not going to support his allies. I bring that up right here because the same exact thing is happening is he's not willing to support those that need to be supported. Yeah, you can give them ammunition and all this, you know, rockets and, you know, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, it's the public persona that you're portraying that's going to sit there and dig yourself a hole. And when you have China wanting to find any reason to go into Taiwan, even though you put boots on the ground in Taiwan now, I mean, the United States, it doesn't show that Joe Biden has a backbone. And so Xi Jinping might just look at this whole thing going, hey, well, hell, he pulled out of uh, Afghanistan. He's pretty weak in Iraq. Um, look what the Houthis have done by attacking the merchant vessels over 120 times before he ever did anything. Now you have this situation where he's not even really having a backbone to support his own ally, Israel. Why not go in and take over Taiwan and call Joe Biden's bluff where Joe Biden is not going to do anything? And I think it would be a good bluff to call because I have a feeling we wouldn't do anything either. I think a lot of Americans don't really care and aren't willing to start a World War III for Taiwan. Well, now, I think Taiwan should have their sovereignty. Don't get me wrong. I just think with 34 going on the $35 trillion of debt, not willing to back Israel, massive problems happening all around the region, you know, worrying about our own safety here with our border, you know, all that stuff. Uh, it's just, again, I think it compounds and it doesn't look good for the United States. So we're going to kind of deviate away from that news. I want to transition into Mr. 45 himself, baby, scores a legal win. You're going to be so tired of winning, folks. So tired of winning. I really hope this man gets in in November, you guys. I, like, I, I think our system is very resilient. Okay, when people are like, oh, you know, Donald Trump, when he's first in, oh, he's going to destroy the country. He's a threat to democracy. He's going to ruin the republic. I was like, no, nah, you know, we're we're pretty like resilient. Like our country could take a lot. Look, would we survive another four years of Joey? Yes. But damn, man, talk about hitting rock bottom. Because obviously more debt's going to happen. More illegal immigration is going to happen. Probably a terrorist attack. You're enabling certain people. Taxes are going to, you know, shellac. I mean, every, everything will go wrong. I think we'll still survive. But God, would we be able to even like remotely come back? Not sure. Not sure. So he scores a big legal win. I'm sure many of you have heard this news where uh, Donald Trump uh, got a victory in a New York appeals court on Monday as the court will allow the former president to post a significantly lower bond in a civil business fraud judgment. This is a good move for them not just for the Trump administration on the win, but I mean more of the legal side of going, hey, dude, you have $464 million that you need to obtain through a bond. Nobody's bond has ever been anywhere near this. So it's a little outrageous. And we'll get to even more of the outrageousness of it all in just one moment. So instead of posting a bond for $464 million, the appeals court ruled that Trump just must now guarantee $175 mil, which he'll be able to do in cash. The appeals court ruling also means that Trump can continue to run his business in New York and gives him an additional 10 days to post the $175 million bond, which is still insane. Don't get me wrong. It's not a small number. That is wild. The ruling comes hours after the deadline for Trump to post the bond hit on Monday, meaning New York Attorney General uh, Lalita James, who, sh who, in my opinion, should be disbarred, uh, could seek the could, to collect the former president and seize his assets. The court's decision will likely prevent James from pursuing the seizure of Trump's property now, which totally ruins her dreams and aspirations of seizing his assets. You know, she was just salivating at the mouth that she had this. She kind of won in her opinion. And now she gets to go after Trump's stuff, which I'll oh, look at that image. You know, New York is going to take over Trump Tower and have all these lefties out there salivating at the mouth to the little culties and, you know, just act like a bunch of idiots. Well, prior to Monday's appeal court, again, Trump would have had to pledge 120% or around $550 million in collateral. 
to a bond company, an amount his lawyer said last week would be practically impossible. Again, it's never happened to you guys. Nobody's ever been in the realm of something like this. So what I love is you had Turley here saying that the judge ruling in Trump's civil fraud case is absurd, quite grotesque. Now, I agree with him, but I want to call out a few kind of um, quotes here that he wrote about. So I like this part here. He said, the problem with the original tr uh, trial and decision is really twofold. One, did he engage in fraud? You know, the real estate market is rather infamous for the undervaluing, overvaluing assets when it comes to loans and taxes, which is absolutely correct. We've covered that here on the show. This is a ubiquitous problem in the area. Well, let's assume that there was over or undervaluations that occurred here. The question then becomes the penalty, which adds a new problem because the judge showed no restraint at all and just imposed a figure that most of us believe is absurd. When you drill down on that figure, there's nothing there, which is absolutely correct. Once again, if I thought he was wrong, you guys know me, I would call this guy out. But since you didn't have anyone that lost a dime, since the so-called victims wanted to get new loans from Trump Corporation, not just once, not just twice, decades over decades, the figure is really quite grotesque in its size, and it does raise constitutional issues. Absolutely. The appeals court made the decision to reduce the original bond. I just love the fact that he shows both sides of it, where there was nobody that was harmed. Nobody lost money on this deal. If anything, New York made a ton of money off just the taxes of him building buildings in New York City. Not to mention just the sales tax of him on the concrete, the metal, you know, whatever it was, the payroll taxes that this guy pays is insane. And you always have to love that too, how these lefties, these libs, they go, he doesn't pay his fair share of taxes. He pays zero federal taxes. The guy pays more taxes than a group of people will pay in their lifetime tenfold just off the sales tax that this guy pays again on stuff he purchases to build these buildings. Folks, I can't take the just the sheer stupid that comes from these lefties. It it, it makes me dehydrated. <laughs> and, and again, who was harmed? Who was harmed? And then you have to love this one. I got to find the clip. I saw this clip circulating. CNN goes out there. Oh, you know, he overvalued his assets. He's saying it's in the hundreds of millions. Well, the judge says it's only worth 18 million. First of all, you're an idiot. Second of all, they just had somebody on their show talking about how if Trump were to sell his Mar-a-Lago property, it would be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Case closed. Yes, that's what he said. It was worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Yes, and you're saying this, this nut job of a, of a judge, who I think should be removed as well, says it's only worth 18 million. You know how stupid you have to be? Uh, hand to God, you know how just off, your rocker off the reservation, you're gone, not with the rest of us. Level of Joe Biden have to be to say something as idiotic like that. When he said that was only worth 18 million, we are now all dumber for having to listen to what that gentleman just had to say. We are all dumber. And the hope is that we could regain our intellect because that dude just ruined it for everybody. So there's that taking place. Um, and by the way, Trump's name, the Trump brand, just automatically raises the level of his properties. So you have that there. And now switching over because we spoke about Joe Biden. We got to cover this. The House GOP threatens to hold A.G. Garland in contempt of Congress over recordings of Biden interview in her case. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I more or less want to make one point and then we're going to move on. So House Republicans are threatening to hold Attorney General Merrick Garland in contempt of Congress over the Justice Department's failure to produce subpoenaed audio recordings of former special counsel Robert Hur's interview with President Biden as part of an investigation into the handling of classified records, which we all know. Now, why do they want this? Well, one, it shows a lot of damning evidence that Joe Biden's brain ain't working and hasn't been working for quite some time. And that's kind of been the theme of this administration is to make him look young and youthful. You know what I mean? A little pep in his walk when he's going to the Marine One, which is terrifying for the freaking staff. Because if he trips over a shoelace, a blade of grass, it's game over for Joey. He ain't running again. Zip his. His hip is blown out. So there's that. And you've kind of seen a different Joe Biden since the State of the Union. If you're, if you're watching a lot of his speeches, one, they really tailor back his speeches and him being out in the front of the public. But he almost sounds coherent now, like a total 180, where now he's somewhat there. I'm not going to say he's fully there because I think that's insane to say. But he's looking a lot better than what he was. And I think they are just 
doping this guy up like never before. I really do believe that. that is my opinion. They're, they're giving this guy something. I don't know if it's Adderall, Ritalin, something that's just freaking making this guy just boom, somewhat coherent. That just shows how far gone he is. So you have that side of it. The other side is that if he doesn't produce these materials no later than April 8th, then they're going to sit there and consider taking further action, such as invoking the contempt of Congress proceedings, which is basically a slap on the wrist. Nothing really happens. I think somebody being thrown in the brig hasn't happened. I really can't even remember. I don't even know if it's happened in a century. It's been a long time since somebody's been kind of like thrown behind bars and really given a penalty and a fine because of all this stuff. If anything, it's kind of a slap on the wrist. Man. You don't do that if you, you need to come in and then they'll finally maybe come in. But the reason why the White House doesn't want this, let's be honest, is because it's going to make Joe Biden look bad. He can't recall basic information. We're not talking about, hey, what was on paragraph three, sentence one of page 28 of a document that was three folders down in the Biden Pence Center labeled screw Joey. Like when nobody's asking those questions, it's, hey, man, what's your birthday? Uh, you know, what's your name? <laughs> uh, when would your son die? Like, <laughs> It's not like detailed stuff and the guy can't produce results in terms of this. And again, it's going to be something that the Republicans can use to go into Joe Biden uses evidence for the upcoming election, which is a matter of, you know, I grant, granted, you know, more than six months away, half a year, but it's still coming up. That's damning evidence against Joe Biden. It just shows that he's not fit to hold office. And a lot of Americans think this guy is not all there. So we'll see them continue to soup up Joey uh, with something. But I want to bring that to your attention that they have until April 8th, which gives us plenty of time, you guys. We got plenty of time to use this material that hopefully uh, is going to come out. It should have already came out already, but there's a lot of stuff in there I think that you and I want to read and, and definitely know about. So I'll keep you updated on that. Well, speaking of things I said I'd keep you up to date, just the government spending more freaking money. Doesn't care one damn bit about you. So check this one out. Biden admin to spend nearly a hundred... Oh, jeez, I can't even say it. $800,000 to study effects of structural racism on kidney health. Jesus, dude, the, the just amount of waste is, is head spinning. It gets me going. It's, it, it riles me up. The Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, will spend nearly 800,000 taxpayer dollars. Folks, I, I, I'm being sincere. It really does take the breath out of me because look, in the grand scheme of our total budget, is $800,000 really a lot of money? No, but I don't look at it that way. I look at it that these are, this is hard. This is Americans hard earned money. No matter the doll you, dollar going out, I don't care if you bought a fucking apple. It's still money that's being spent. And, and forgive me, I, I told you, it gets me riled up. You guys work hard, man. We all work hard as Americans. I don't care how much it is. Do you need it? Do we have to spend money on this? I mean, and we started the show. Look around. Look around. Roads suck. Our bridges are falling apart. Our veterans are getting F. Our military. We can't even recruit people. We can't even keep our military bases in like the 21st century. We got homeless people all over the streets. We can't even clean our streets. Go down the Hollywood Boulevard. I know a lot of you don't live in California, but. Hollywood Boulevard, a massive terrorist, uh, terrorist, we'll get to that in one moment, tourist organization. It's just, it's a dump. It's a dump. I mean, I understand this is federal stuff, but even state. You know, again, it's just not bad. It's not bad enough for even Republicans, yes, quite honestly, because nothing's being done. Nothing's being done. We, we vote the same idiots that the Democrats do in office. The Republicans are idiots too. You know, before I used to be like, ah, you know, I really don't want to like, on my show, hound Republicans. It kind of looks bad. You know what? I almost cussed again. Screw it, man. They should be hounded. I'm not entitled to the Republican Party. Yeah, I'm registered Republican, but you know what? If they if they continue this, I'm just not going to vote for him anymore. You know what I mean? Vote for Trump. But I'm just tired of it, man. I, I'm tired of all this crap that's going on because we're just driving ourselves into the ground. Getting riled up again, folks. I'm getting riled up again. Woo! The whopping sum, which is displayed here, Allocated to this university in Atlanta, Georgia, of course, to support the institution's attempt to mitigate the effects of structural racism on chronic kidney disp uh, disease. There you go. Disparities. There you go. I was waiting for it. Now, I didn't know if they'd actually use the word disparity, but what these liberals do 
uh, is they take any sort of differential in data and automatically they have to research it and really parse through it to see how much racism is there. It's not that there's no racism. I said that very clearly of why I phrased it that way is how much racism is there. There's no scenarios for these liberals that this is not racism. It is racism for them, which is why they're spending almost a million dollars on it. The researchers claim that the current treatment for chronic kidney disease fails to attend to the role of structural racism, citing racial disparities. Anywhere there's disparities, there must be. Between races, there must be, guaranteed without a doubt, racism. The grant description goes to explain that researchers will use public health critical race practice, whatever the f that is, a public health framework that addresses change through an anti-racism lens. Oh, God. Isn't it, exha isn't it all this exhausting? <laughs> public health critical race proxy, oh, is that praxis? Which has been referenced in academic articles focuses on race consciousness. The primacy of racialization, race as a social construct, and the ordinance of ordinariness of racism. Jesus. I mean, you guys, this is insane. Has anybody ever heard of this stuff? Is this really what we're focused on here? The push to embed critical race theory into the federal government comes as the Biden administration has institutionalized the diversity, equity, and inclusion agenda throughout the federal agencies that make up the executive branch. Talk about, that will cripple you guys. DEI, this woke agenda that's being woven into our country and all our institutions is going to destroy this country from the inside out. I have a part of a chapter, it might be a whole chapter, in my book called Critical Race Theory actually starts from the beginning, meaning critical law studies. And I educate you kind of through the form of how it got to critical uh, race theory and then how that is interwoven into our education system as an educator myself. So this is where the study's going. It's all about racism. It has to be all about racism. It's a waste of money. And it's terrible because those with kidney disease, my father had kidney, kidney problems. And, uh, you know, I had to go into the dialysis area. And it's, look, I'm for taking care of people with kidney stuff. It's, it's horrifying to see people even my age or younger their kidneys aren't working properly. So it's not the fact that I don't care about people. I just don't care about race, like at all. I don't care if you're black, Asian, white. Folks, we all have the same kidneys. You know what I mean? Like, it's just those kidneys don't work and we got to help them with it. But you're going to sit there and shout racism into the sky. It doesn't solve anything. And just because of the disparity in data, again, doesn't mean anything. Folks, then, then you could say God himself is racist because there's a disparity with even us as a creation terms of the effects of how somebody are treated versus how somebody isn't treated. What I mean by that is the biological level, in terms of if you look at the disparity of races, of what some sort of disease affects over another race's disease, meaning somebody's being harmed more of a disease than the other, however you want to phrase it, I'm trying to just reach all platforms here in terms of phraseology, is that itself can be looked at as racist. So is God racist? That certain things affect races at different levels. Is that racist? Or hell, is he, you know, certain countries predominantly again different ethnicities right different races are affected on a geographical level different than other places that tend to be more white say like european countries than the african countries so is is he racist once again is the lord himself racist because there's more drought there's more famine in africa than say europe it's just that it's that argument right is that there's a disparity there must be thus racism then i, I just it's it, it boggles the mind i will never understand it could there be maybe but to just automatically make that jump is insane in my mind. And that's what they'll do. Again, they will make jumps to institutional racism or there just must be racism. So check this out. Ghostbusters asked, uh, actor Ernie Hudson said racism is not to blame for his receiving less money and having a smaller part in the latest sequel compared to his co-stars. Disparity. Again, disparity. And these lefties are losing their freaking mind over it. Going, why is a black man getting paid less money? Why is he having a smaller role than other people like his white co-stars? Like, have you ever thought maybe that's just the way it was written? He never had a huge role to begin with. And by the way, Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, and others, it was kind of just all distributed amongst everybody. But this is what they do because of the disparity on time on screen, how many lines you have, how many words are spoken, all the pay. I mean, you name it. It all has to do with racism with these liberal lefties, and it's exhausting. The 78-year-old discussed his thoughts during an interview here, saying, you know, being a person of African descent anywhere in the world, we're all just learning how to live together and get along together and realize that we are all connected. Correct. And it's very tempting sometimes to blame anything that doesn't work in life on racism. Thank you, Hudson. But 
There are a lot of things that play into it. It's not quite that simple. Thank you for educating these woke liberals that can't wrap their head around it, that think that racism is involved in every aspect of life. The celeb pointed out that he believes a bigger name star would have received a higher paycheck regardless of his skin color. Gee, how'd you get to that conclusion? We could say it's a racial thing, but I think if Eddie Murphy had played the role I played, he would have been paid very well, the actor added. I think studios are in the business of making money and they pay what they feel they have to. So are you making the claim that because somebody has more recognition, somebody's more famous, that they thus should make more money because the idea is that because that person's more famous and they have more recognition, that they'll bring more moviegoers to the box office. Is that what you're saying? Because God, that sounds really freaking logical and really spot on. That has nothing to do with race, has everything to do with merit, has everything to do with their publicity, how famous they are, how many people they're going to put butts in the seats to watch them. Maybe that has a lot to do with it, but these liberals don't understand business. You understand majority of Congress knows nothing about business, never owned a business, never went to business school, hasn't read a book on fucking business, and they're going to tell everybody else how to run their businesses. Insane. It's one thing if you were, I don't even say you have to know, like you had to have a business to tell people how to run their business. You know, I did people's taxes, taxes. I would help them run their business. I did auditing for, for companies. I would tell them and give them advice when doing their compilations and reviews. Hey, this is probably not a good move. Never owned a business at the time. You call it Bald Bradshaw a business. This is basically a business. I'd love to have somebody employed in the future and take care of them and, and support them and be able to make enough, enough money to donate to people and, and change people's lives and support those in need like our veterans and start a movement with that. Long-term plan. We'll see if we ever get there. But the, going on a rant here, but you understand what I mean. It's like, they don't understand this aspect of business and how it's ran and how money freaking works. They just love shouting shit to the sky. Racism, the guy's not paying enough money. Like, shut up. Why don't you think about this stuff for a second? Like, stop opening your freaking mouth for once. You woke libs. Stop opening your mouth just for once and learn something. I don't know everything. And I'm sure I can call it out for stupid stuff I say here on the show. And I will eat my words. If I am wrong, nothing happens. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. Okay, I'll learn from it. Great. That's one of the reasons why we do it. Like, but they, they just sit there and just shout stuff. I'm like, can you just think for one, just one moment, just think about what you said. Okay, just think. Like, rather than it being racism, let's think about the thousand other things it could possibly be that probably isn't racism. Holy hell. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so we can say it's a racial thing. Again, he brings up Eddie Murphy here. Hudson worked on five Ghostbuster films, including the original back in the day. I'm a big Ghostbuster fan. I hope this one works out. I heard it's not as good, but I'll let you guys know. I do plan on seeing it. But uh, look, he further stated that he finds the film's four stars brilliantly funny on their own. Uh, but say Ghostbuster fans were looking for something different. Fans were really invested in the story and the characters. And I think it was disappointing. I enjoyed the movie, but I think it wasn't that fans were hoping for. You know, when you keep pumping out sequels, I understand you want to kind of grab a hold of the last Ghostbusters film, which did well. But this has nothing to do with racism. He just isn't that prolific in terms of notoriety. He's not going to put butts in the seats. When you see this man, he's not going to put butt. Folks, Dan Aykroyd's white. People are not flocking to the studios, studios, to the movie theater to go see Dan Aykroyd. I think Dan Aykroyd's funny. I think Bill Murray's hilarious. I think this gentleman here is pretty good at his roles too. I have no qualms with him. But if you suck at your job, if you're not going to put butts in the seats, you're not going to make money. People understand that. Holy Lord. Well, look it. I told you I'd get to the, to, I almost said get to the racism stuff. We just covered that. Uh, I told you I'd, we'd get to the border issue. I keep you up to date always on this stuff. So FBI director uh, confirmed over the weekend uh, to Marco Rubio that a trafficking network exists that smuggles illegal aliens into the U.S. who have ties to what? Who have ties to what? ISIS. Huh. Who? Who just committed? Who just committed a massive terrorist attack in Russia? Oh, it was ISIS. Yes, correct. You're right. Holy lordy. I'm freaking dehydrated today, man. I don't know what's going on here. I'm just, just a camel. Look, <laughs> insane. I know it's the word. Can I just get shirts made with insane on it? And just maybe put Joey like pointing with his fingers. Four more years. These people are idiots. They want four more. <laughs> ISIS just commits a massive terrorist attack. 
And now we know that there's people coming through, which we've known for a while, that have connections to terrorists. Lovely. Lovely. So all these people, you guys, all, you have to understand, just in the same way these people are idiots when it comes to racism, these people are idiots when it comes to people entering our country. Again, I want people to come in. I want people to have a great freaking life here because this is the best place where you're going to have a great freaking life. The Democrats are just trying to ruin it for everybody, including those that are trying to come in legally. They're, for everybody. You can't tell me they're not. Look at Democrat-ran areas. Crime is through the roof. They are looting people. Homeless people are not just attacking your children. They're shooting themselves up with drugs. The fentanyl crawl passed out for hours on the streets, sometimes on school grounds, where your children have to walk through this. They have to see a guy's ball sack hanging through pants that are empty. Eye level. Do you want your child walking around Hollywood Boulevard, see a guy's nut sack hang out of his jeans, right in front of her face, going, Daddy, what is that? No, not appropriate. Or a guy just jerking it in front of everybody in public. You, know, you, you, you gotta love that when you talk about these things, the libs get all kind of like, oh, oh my God, that's, that's, that's so disgusting. That's so graphic. Yes, yes, you're correct, you idiot. Like, I, you, they are. They, not everybody, not everybody, please. I know it sounds unprofessional. Some of these people are idiots. If you think it's acceptable to have a freaking grown man that's homeless masturbating in front of your freaking daughter, that's insane. The left love this stuff, you guys. These are the same people that are pushing your children to be trans in the education system. They're showing your children how to use butt plugs and use dildos in the classroom in third grade. They're showing them how to masturbate with cartoons. We've covered all of this. We've showed the images. We've showed the textbooks. We've showed the videos. We've done all the shit. We were on Project Veritas back in the day when we were exposing all this stuff with James O'Keefe. Great, he's not with Project Veritas anymore, but he's with somebody else. I think he started his own, own crew there, but it's just, it's, how did I deviate from that? We're back here. I go on my rants. You guys said you love it. I go on my rants. I'm all over the place here. Holy lordy. A freaking damn good Tuesday show, man. I got to say, I'm having a good time. I'm frustrated as hell. I'm frustrated as hell. Oh, that's what it was. Democrats ruin our country. That's right. We can always bring it back to that because that's what it's all about for the Democrat Party. So right here, in the same way, they ruin our country by bringing in illegal aliens that are connected to ISIS. Isn't that just lovely? So Rubio made the remarks on Sunday again uh, while discussing that the ISIS can, uh, basically did a devastating terrorist attack in Moscow, which we all saw. I saw footage of this stuff of people just mowing over people. So this is largely the Afghan wing of ISIS. Oh, God. Hmm. Huh. Afghan pulled out people falling from planes out of the sky, giving people military-grade equipment. Now, this just might play into my treason argument for Joe Biden. Let's see here. It's reconstitute itself as we warned would happen when he had this disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. Oh, God. Hmm. So let's see. This is the ISIS Afghan wing. We left military grade equipment in Afghanistan. ISIS is using military US grade equipment to harm US allies and people around the world. Sounds like Joe Biden has been funding terrorism allowing our enemies that are terrorists to enter through our country and our borders, giving them safe passage, comfort. God, it sounds a hell of a lot like treason to me, folks. Democrats don't give two shits. If they did, this wouldn't be happening right here. And if you think it's not going to come back to bite us in the ass, you're an idiot. You are a big idiot. I'm not saying it's going to happen in a, in a day. I'm not saying it's going to happen in a year. I think these guys are planning something terrible anywhere around the globe. Hell, they just did it in Russia. If you think they could pull shit like that in Russia and not here, people believe it, you guys. People go, oh, they're, they're, we're safe. Joe Biden has national security. He tells me on TV all the time. I hear from MSNBC. They tell me the truth that he's protecting us. It's all about national security. These are the people that are going to go out and vote, you guys. One of the reasons why we didn't want to withdraw is because you gave them operating space to reorganize themselves and plan externally. Oh, God, no shit, Marco. No shit. And since that time, they've attacked inside Afghanistan. No, why wouldn't they? You gave them equipment and just free reign to rape and pillage women in Afghanistan. Like, we are. It's like, it's, I tell you, these people, these Democrats, they do stuff. And you sit there as a Republican conservative just waving your freaking hand like, this, this is what's going to happen. Hey, you idiot. 
this is what's going to happen. So you're shouting to the skies that, look, you hope it doesn't happen, but the probability is so large that it's going to. You tell them it's going to happen, and they sit there, and they're scratching their head when it does, like, oh, shit. Huh. Huh. How did that happen? They're, ugh, they're idiots. They're freaking idiots. God, who would have thought that these terrorists that hate Western civilization, hate people that go against their religion, God, who would have thought that they would sit there and do something like that and use our equipment to harm people? People like them. People that like them. They're going to. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's so insane. Rubio noted that the, uh, ISIS was responsible for the deadly suicide blast that left 13 American service members dead in Kabul airport. Yes. And when the guy shouted during his uh, State of the Union, the dude was arrested. But yeah, you have these people blocking the motorcade. Nothing happens to them. Check this one out. Check this quote out. And they'll do it here in our homeland, Rubio said. I think we should be very concerned as the FBI director confirmed to me that there is a wing there is a trafficking network out there that specializes in moving people. They do have a profit moving people, migrants around the world, including across our southern border, who have links to ISIS. Highest level. Rubio is part of the highest level of government in terms of intelligence. Knows way more than we do about everything in terms of what's going on. If this dude's sounding the alarm, Christopher Ray, FBI director, who's no friend of this nation, in my opinion, based on him allowing a lot of this to happen and just what the FBI's done to this country. Look, if he's saying, red flags everywhere, something's going to happen, probably going to happen. God, these people are idiots, man. I am passionate because people are going to get hurt. That's what bugs me. At the end of the day, it's not about Democrat and Republican. It's about Americans, folks. I shit on Democrats because their, their hypocrisy and what they do is so frustrating to me. It pisses me off. They don't do anything right. So, okay, I shouldn't say anything, but you understand what I mean. They do a lot of things, a lot of things wrong. They're destroying our cities. They think that they're doing something good. They're thinking they're doing it in the name of removing racism, which everybody agrees there shouldn't be racism. But they just shout stuff. They don't think about what are the consequences of what they're doing because their slogan sounds so good. And they shout it to the skies of Black Lives Matter. Yeah, Black Lives do matter. All lives matter. What the hell are you talking about? Why? Like, what, the, what does this have to do with anything? People matter. People matter. And that's why I'm pissed here. People matter. I know I'm preaching the choir, but are you guys with me? Like, isn't this insane? Well, speaking of that, <laughs> you guys like how I just go from wildly like passionate to, hey, well, you know, the next episode. <laughs> so I like this is actually really frustrating here. This uh, this um, president of Mexico. So I don't want to cover the whole thing, but Speaker Johnson did fire back at Mexico president where he just said this. This Mexico president just said outlandish things. So I want to find the quotes here. Here it is. Check this out. House Speaker Mike Johnson on Monday slammed the Mexican president um, and his recommendations for the U.S. on how to tackle the border crisis. So the Mexican president re-upped his suggestion the U.S. should scrap sanctions on Venezuela and end the Cuban embargo, grant citizenship to illegal immigrants from Mexico living in the U.S., and cough up $20 billion a year, not like over a decade, a year to assist countries in Latin America as well as the Caribbean. And basically says, hey, if you don't do this, well, then the flow of migrants is just going to happen. Why is it going to happen? Because he's going to allow it to happen. So corrupt. And this guy goes, oh, well, you know, we're still going to support United States regardless. And we're really going to work with them. No, you're not. We've seen video clips back in the day of you busing migrants to the border. Don't tell me all this crap. It's insane. So on Monday, Johnson reiterated his call to coerce Mexico into being more cooperative and reining in the border mayhem. The president of Mexico is coddling cartels, correct, and demanding the United States bankroll even more mass migration into our country. President Biden needs to confront the fact that employing leverage, as President Trump did, we should be using every tool at our disposal to secure our border and stem the flow of aliens in the United States, including the migrant protection protocols, and should be bringing every bit of leverage to compel the Mexican government to cooperate. And they're not going to. They say they're going to. He literally said it in here. She said, the reporter goes, if we don't do this. Are you still going to help the United States in terms of, you know, mass migration? Oh, yeah, we'll take, we'll help them, all this stuff. He talks about it in here. They don't care. It's a bunch of BS. 
why would I care what this guy thinks after what he's done? And he makes it seem like in his interview, like we need Mexico. Let that one sink in. Like we need Mexico. You are so far off the reservation. If you think that's the case, dude, your cartel runs your country. And by the way, he's not going to do anything about it, which was stated inside his interview. He's not going to do anything about the cartel. The cartel runs him. It's, it's one of the most corrupt nations out there. Don't give me like, oh, we're, we're going to help you guys. We don't need you. We don't need you at all. You need us more than we need you. Oh, big time. So again, we're going to go back to Ed O'Keefe here has a question about illegal immigration. I want to hear what the question was and what he has to say here. here Border Patrol chief yesterday suggested in an interview um, that the situation at the southern border is a national security threat because of the roughly 140,000 known gotaways, or those that crossed the border and were detected as crossing illegally. Is that the position of the whole Biden administration of the White House, that the situation down there remains a national security The president threat? has spoken to this. I mean, he's talked about the, the urgent need for additional funding for uh, key capabilities at the border. And if you care about the border, if you care about the security of the border, and the president sure does, then we ought to get that national security supplemental passed. That's what that funding will do. Uh, you, there's only so much that he can do through executive action. In order to get more resources to prevent more people from getting in illegally, you got to have funding. But a national security threat is going a little further than the broad concerns of the president, and more specific. DHS monitors uh, all available intelligence at the border every single day. And we're certainly aware uh, that uh, that there could be national security threats that can arise at the border, which is why we're... we're we just got done talking about how there's ISIS-connected people in the country. There's terrorists here now, which we've known about for the last two years. Oh, DHS is monitoring it. Oh, goody. That, oh, that makes me feel so much better. We're arguing so hard to get additional resources and capabilities down there. Uh, two questions on Israel. Um, I know you know, I used to somewhat like John Kirby. This guy's a scumbag. He is. I'm sorry, but he is. People don't like me talking like that. He's a scumbag. What he's done, and he's sitting there on the podium lying, but our national security is at risk. He's like, well, yeah, it might, it might be a little bit. Why is it at all? Why is it at all, man? <laughs> oh, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. Uh oh, God, good morning. It's only Tuesday. <laughs> well, in our last bit here, White House blast uh, GOP budget says Biden won't let them defund the police. Watch the spin on this, you guys. Watch the spin on this bad boy. So the White House is blasting Republicans once again, just like they do with illegal immigration, and is accusing Republicans of taking steps to defund the police while claiming President Biden will protect law enforcement and support crime reducing programs. <laughs> Right there. That's all you need to know that they're lying, that they're lying. So is there a defunding the police kind of happening? The reason why they're spinning this is right here. The White House is blasting the RSC for its proposal to reduce funding for community oriented policing services. Community folks is a local and state level program and initiative, a program that was created in the 90s as a means to support state and local law enforcement. There you go. With expenses like salaries, court programs and juvenile justice programs. The question here is what we talked about earlier. We saw Rand Paul talk about this and or Ron Paul, Rand Paul, where what's taking place now is a lot of our federal money is being moved into state and local levels. For example, New Jersey building a $4 million walkway. And then you have, I think it's Detroit is building like uh, headquarters to build parade floats. And that's something that should be done on a state level. But what states are starting to do is they're removing certain portions of their budget because they can't print money. And that's being offset by federal money so they can use that budgetary money, you know, in other places. And that's how they're getting away with pushing a lot of these initiatives where they wouldn't be able to push it because they don't have the money. And that money will have to go to actual like structural problems, structural issues like roadways and stuff like that. But since the federal government's funding all this BS, now they're spending on DEI initiatives, institutional racism. Let's research, you know, where racism being interwove, critical race theory. Let's try to teach you how to trans your kids in the, in the school system, all this stuff. That, that's how they're getting away with it. Whereas once you stop the flow of money going to a lot of these places, then they got to really reorganize and recalibrate their, their budget. And a lot of times they'll just increase taxes because they're Democrat ran. So the conversation is, do we continually take, do we continue to take federal money when we're $34 trillion in debt, mind you, as much as you love the police and I do too, you don't have the money, 
what do you do? You don't pay on a federal level. It should be done by state and local governments, which is, by the way, a conservative idea. If you're going to be a fiscal conservative, what they're saying here as far as Republicans, Republicans are not conservatives, you guys. Understand that. There's, there's the difference between Republican and conservative. That's probably going to be the topic of my next book. I've outlined uh, the like part one of part five of the book, if I decide to write it, is all about conservatism because there's such a thing where people are constantly conflating the two. Republicans and conservatives are different. There's a reason why I always say I'm a registered Republican, but I can, I'm a conservative. So conservatives support our men and women in blue, hundred percent. Grandfather, my grandfather, my 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 grandfather was a, uh, a a highway patrolman. My dad was a highway patrolman. Okay, I support the boys in blue. My friends are police officers. Support our men and women in blue, one hundred percent. But check this out: support our men and women in blue should question whether the government should involve itself in state and local law enforcement, even if it's only a matter of funding. What does the federal government know about the needs of what the state and local police, wherever it's at, needs in terms of funding? In the same way here, that's why we always talk about local and state level, is because your local level is going to know more about you than some dude in Washington that's 3,000 miles away in my case. They don't know who the hell you are. They don't give two shits about you. The White House is also accusing House Republicans of taking steps to support abolishing the FBI and the Bureau of uh, Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosive ATF. Yeah, that, that one's true. That one, <laughs> I'll give them that one. Oh, yeah, right. Fuck them. That's all, that's all I have to say. Screw them. You sit there and are committing corruption at all levels of government and using the FBI and ATF to do those things. The ATF under the Obama administration gave the cartels guns, and their idea was well, once they commit the crimes, we'll be able to track where those guns came from. Not only will we sit there and arrest the American people that sold them the guns, but we'll also get the cartels at the same time. You mean after they just got done murdering a bunch of people? That's your idea? It, if that doesn't tell you how stupid some of these people are that are in our government, I don't know what will. They're idiots. They're idiots. And these people are handling our budget. They're handling our money. Violent crime surged under President Biden's predecessor. So now they're blaming Trump for sure. Who, who are the ones committing the crimes, you guys? Oh, it's a Black Lives Matter movement. That's right. Oh, it's Antifa. Mm -hmm. Where did all that go? Like, where, where did all that go? Why, why are they not marked? Did, did, like, all of a sudden police brutality go out the window? Are all of a sudden police, like, learning their lesson? I thought police were racist. Like, where, where's Black Lives Matter? Where's Antifa? Why are they not storming the streets? I guarantee you it's coming back. It's all it's all push. And I'm starting to believe it's all government ran. I think it's all Soros funding that's going into Antifa, Black Lives Matter. I think it's a lot of our government pushing stuff out there. And I know I sound like a conspiracy theorist, but the more I dive into this stuff behind the scenes, off camera, the more I start believing it. Because you don't see it whenever there's a Democrat ran administration. Where, where like, They just pretend like it's just disappeared. It's just gone. Well, if it was always there, and you're saying it always is there, as we just got done talking about, then where is it? Why are you not storming the streets? Why are you not sitting there painting asphalt again that says Black Lives Matter? Where's all the rainbow stuff? It'll be back. Clip it. It will be back. So they're going to blame Trump for the rise in crime that was committed by Democrats and these woke libs. But this president immediately fought back and has now reversed that trend with historic reduction in crime. <laughs> I just can't. I can't do it, man. So much BS out there. Yeah. Really, Biden? Huh? Why? Why is our uh, Why is our ice cream locked up behind glass doors and chains? Huh? That's weird. Why is there, like massive homeless crisis and homeless people are attacking our citizens all across the nation? That's That's really weird. Why are you giving people uh, drugs like free drugs in the middle of broad daylight in Democrat-ran cities and syringes? That's weird. That's a crime. You have ten million people pouring across the board. That's a pretty massive movement in crime as well. That's weird too. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah, arson. Yeah, no, no, thefts taking places. I mean, God, it's so bad that you had to actually lower the penalty in some cases on a lot of these crimes because there's not enough space in the jail system. Yeah, no, he has it all figured out, you guys. Yeah, it's, it's, it, he knows exactly what he's doing. He has no difference between his ass and his mouth, but no, he's going to figure out the nation. Bates said Biden took unprecedented action to hire waves of police officers, invest in crime effort, effective crime reduction strategies, and mental health services. Oh, my mental health services. Joe Biden uh, won't let congressional Republicans defund the police. This is going to be their message, you guys. Abolish law enforcement agencies like the FBI, gut crime prevention, and roll back landmark legislation critical to the fight against gun crime. By the way, nowhere does they cite like, oh, how much effect this is actually going to be. 
in terms of crimes. They just shout stuff to the skies because that's what Democrats do. Racism, bigotry. It's no different than name calling. That's exactly what they're doing here. They're just trying to do it in a political sense. Abolish law enforcement agencies like the FBI. We would love it, but that's probably not going to happen. Uh, defund the police. That's not really a thing either, but they'll still push in the same way. Oh, the Republicans are going to get rid of your social security and Medicare. Nobody's talking about that. They're talking about restructuring it. But at no point they're saying, hey, you know what? Those that paid in the system aren't going to get their money back. That's just going to happen regardless because these idiots decided to put something in effect that was never going to work out in the first place. That's why odds are you're only going to see 70 or 80 percent of your Social Security unless they actually up the Social Security is being taken out of your paycheck, which people are already struggling, which is in effect just a tax. So Social Security is just doomed at the end of the day. 70 percent of our budget is social programs. Those social programs are crippling our country. If you remove those social programs, we're going to be just fine. If you remove the social programs, we're going to have a massive surplus, by the way, and then we'll actually be able to pay off this debt. That's really the solution. But because people have handouts and they think that they're not going to have to deal with the problem, and they don't want to face the problem when it actually happens, which is going to be absolutely devastating. You're going to be eating your freaking leather shoes to stay alive, like the Great Depression. Uh, you know, then it's not a problem. Again, a lot of Americans don't know that a problem's coming because they don't want to face that problem because the second you have to face that problem, then you realize the dire consequences of having to solve that problem and having to solve that problem ain't going to be fun. Damn. Damn good show, boys. And gals, and gals, and gals. <laughs> I'm tired and dehydrated, but damn, I love hanging out with all of you. I really wish, again, when you guys usually see this, I'm either getting ready for work. In some cases, I'm already at work. And uh, But I'm always in the live chat. Please don't think just because I'm not writing in there. I'm usually trying to like, get ready or I'm doing something and I can't write. Um, but I'm reading your guys' feed as you, as you type. And I think it's awesome that you guys communicate with one another in the live chat. And uh, I just wish that I could do uh, live streams you know, make money full time and do this and hang out with you guys, do more long form stuff and maybe do like a couple hours rather than just an hour and just go over a variety of things. I love hanging out with you guys. I hope you enjoy it as well. Um, but uh, that's all I have to say. I really don't know where I was going with that. Just uh, wanted to hang out with you guys a little bit longer than, uh, than normal. So uh, hit that like and subscribe button. Folks, uh, leave us a comment down below. It really does support the channel. I know it takes time. Write anything. Just put yes or no or just a word. And uh, that helps support the show and the channel. You hitting that like button uh, really does support. If you want to go above and beyond, we have a membership. Would love for you to support the show with your hard-earned cashola. There's, it's just 99 cents a month. If you want to get on that, it gives you a badge. It gives you access to the live chat. Um, it have you pop up first in my feed. I get to see you first. Uh, same with your comments. I read your comments first. Uh, if you look through the membership comments, they get priority. And so I read those first. Uh, so those are kind of the perks. And maybe those perks will extrapolate as time goes on. But for those that do uh, and already are a member, I really do appreciate your generosity. Uh, even 99 cents to me is a big deal uh, that your hard-earned money going somewhere where you think uh, it, it, it get, gets back somewhere um, out there. And I think it does. I think we are getting conservative thought ideas out there to new people. So uh, with that being said, folks, hit that like and subscribe and leave us a comment down below. Share this with your friends and family, all of our social media. Folks, I'll see you next time here on The Bull Rancho.